All right, let us now answer this question here, which says, which of the following statements is not true? You know, if you've got a highlighter in the test, you should definitely highlight that because not true, you know, people could really mess up this question. All right, the slope of the least squares line is positive. We come and look, you know, it's going up. So it's positive. You can also look at your R value. The R value here is positive. So it's positive. This A, that's true. So this is true. We keep on moving. Next, birds with a longer beak tend to have wider beaks. Well, that's also true. If you have a longer beak, you tend to have a wider beak. And that's why it's going up with that. So that is also a true. And next, there is a strong positive linear association between beak width and beak length of these birds. So your eye really needs to be looking at this po a strong positive, strong positive. And this is where you're going to refer to your R value. So your correlation coefficient R is this. Now, the reason why this kind of tips you off as to what you want to look at. So I would go here and I would say, hey, R is equal to 0.8616. Now, what is you know your correlation coefficient? Well, here are the notes. So here it says, you know, your correlation coefficient R could be between negative one and one. It tells you the strength and the direction. And really here is what you want to look at. So as you can see, you can either have really strong negative. So that looks like this or really strong positive. That looks like that. This has no, like there's no relationship between your X and Y here. Here there's a bit more, here there's a bit less. Uh, so as you can see, if you're between 0 0.75 and one, you have a strong positive uh, correlation. And sure enough, well, if we come here, 0 0.861, that's greater than 0.75, which was our lowest for this. So that means, yes, this is a, a strong positive linear association. So that is also true. Next, it says approximately 74% of the variation in beak width is explained by the variation in beak length. All right, so this, that sentence right there, how like the variation is explained by blah, 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 that should remind you of R squared. Okay, what is R squared? Let's come and look at the notes. This is what we call the coefficient of determination, and it provides a measure of how well the linear rule linking two variables works to predict values. So now it's between zero and one. And as you can see, the coefficient of determination tells us that the R squared of the variation of the RV, so the response variable, is explained by the variation of the EV, the explanatory variable. So what we want to do here is figure out, hey, is my R squared actually 74%? So to do that, what we do, and you can see I've already done it, you take 0.8616, so your R value, you square it, and you end up with 0.74, blah, 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 blah. So sure enough, yes, 0 0.74, 74%, they're the same. So that means D is true. So that means E has to be the one that is false. And sure enough, when we read it, it says using the least squares line to predict the beak width of the bird and the beak length of 8.1 millimeters would be an example of extrapolation. Okay, so using the least square to predict the beak width of a bird with a beak length of 8.1 would be extrapolation. Well, coming up here, 8.1 is there. This is not extrapolation, it is interpolation. Remember, extrapolation would be greater than 11 or lower than seven. That would be extrapolation. You're extrapolating outside the data. This is interpolation because it's within the data set here. So let's circle E, E is my correct answer because it's incorrect. So it is false. And the reason why it is false, how am I spelling false right now? False would be interpolation. That's it. That's how you do it. That's question 11.